In order to tell time, you have to know what each hand represents. The short hand is the hour hand. The longer hand is the minute hand. An easy way to remember that is that hour is a shorter word, so the shorter hand is the hour hand, and minute is a longer word, and minute is the longer hand. The hour hand uses the large numbers on the clock. Okay? When the hour hand gets to one of those numbers, it is that hour. So right now it is exactly 1 o'clock. When the hour hand gets to the next number, it is 2 o'clock. So when the hour get, hand gets to the next number, it is 3 o'clock. The minute hand, utilize, there are 60 minutes in an hour, so each one, of these little tally, each one of these little tally marks is a minute. There's five minutes between each of the numbers. So as I go around the clock, it would be, uh, we just count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on and so forth. Now, the minute hand and the hour hand, they move together. Um, however far the minute hand moves, the hour hand moves that same distance to the next number. For example, right now it's 3 o'clock, but as I go around the clock, 3.05, 3.10, 3.15, my hour hand is moving slowly towards the next number. Right now, my minute hand has moved a quarter of the way around the clock, and my hour hand is, has moved a quarter of the way to the next number. As I continue to go, 320, 325, 330. Now my minute hand has traveled halfway around the clock, and my hour hand has gone halfway to the next number. So my hour hand and minute hand move along together. Continuing along, 335, 340, 345. Now my minute hand has gone three quarters of the way around the clock, and my hour hand has gone three quarters of the way to the next hour. 350, 355. Now this is where this is where things can often get confusing. A lot of students would say that right now it is 455 but it cannot be 455 because our hour hand has not yet made it to the next hour. So only when the big hand, the minute hand, makes it to the 12, only then will my hour hand be on the 4. So as my minute hand continues around the whole way around the clock one time, those 60 minutes, that is one hour. So my hour hand moves the one hour from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And I'll, I'll just do two examples of uh, finding time to the nearest minute. Um, let's go with right here. Now, the first thing you want to find is find the minutes. So to find the minutes, you start at the 12, and you count by fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and when you can't count by fives anymore, you'll just count the tallies to get to where you're at. So 25, 26, 27. After you do that, you figure out the hour. Now my hour hand is between the four and the five, so it has not yet made it to the five, so that means it is 427. One more example, a more difficult one in the area that students commonly mess up, up here in this last portion of the clock. And we'll just make it right about, we'll make it that time there. So once again, first thing you need to figure out, first thing you need to find is the minutes. Starting at the 12, count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and then counting by ones. 56, 57. So that's 57 minutes. Now I need to figure out the hour. Now I know that this hour hand has not yet made it to the 8 because my minute hand has not yet made it to the 12. And since my minute hand has not yet made it to the 12, I know my hour hand did not make it to the 8. So it can't be 8 o'clock. It has to be 7 o'clock. So it is 7.57.